Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I had a, a great email question from from uh, one of the viewers here that wrote me on the email and asked me, what is, uh, can I go into a little bit more in depth about acrylic solvent technique? They saw it in the 30 Days of Roses, but wanted to know a little bit more about it. And I thought that would be a great question because it's something I paint all the time. I don't always film it because a lot of people like to use extenders and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to show you the acrylic solvent technique, okay? So I have a board here, and it's just an end cut of a board. It's about uh, 12 inches by about 12 inches. It's almost a square here. And um, I have just given it a coat of the canvas prep medium or white. Uh, like I say in so many things, I don't like to use gessos or anything like that because sometimes those gessos have vinyl in them and it causes your colors to slide. I like to use a pure matte paint myself so that the, the um, paint grabs. That's what I like. I like the paint to soak in a little bit and grab so I don't like to seal off the surface too much. Okay, so for my colors here, this is my standard YouTube palette. All the list, just to save time on the video, all the listed of the all the colors are listed in the video description right below. Just go down and you can and you'll see they're all heritage acrylic. Okay, so they're all 100% acrylic. This is an artist quality acrylic, and um, I'm just going to use water in the paint. I have a little extender out here, but I'm not going to use that today. I'm just going to use water, and we're going to paint in a, a pure acrylic flowers. Okay, all right, so. What I'm going to do is I like to put some interest and stuff into the background and I love, believe it or not, I love dirty water. So I've been painting all day with this water. It's got some good stuff in it, nice and dirty water. It's kind of like already pre-toned. You know, you could tell I was using some heavy greens and stuff into it. But let's take um, maybe a little burnt sienna into this maybe a touch of blue, and I'll just water this down. It's almost like a watercolor kind of thing here. And let's just tone, we'll start putting some of this color just softly. See, I like a, so I'll, I'll push, there's a soft gray, and then you can make some beautiful colors. This is, the brush I'm using here is, is a fusion brush. It's just a large, it's actually what our, our varnish brushes and stuff that we use. When a brush starts to get a little old for varnishing, then I take it over to my palette. It comes into one of my painting brushes here. So I'm just going to add some water here to this and start pushing some of this. See, I like when some of that blue and some of these, uh, uh, you know, the burnt sienna and stuff comes off a little different. I like that kind of stuff. I like to play around with stuff here. You know, some of the colors, some of the things I like to experiment and try. And especially, you know, if you want a watercolor type of effect or so to the back of a, a, a painting like this, this is a, you know, it's just a great way. And you can leave something like that to to grab interest, you know, and, and and that's all up to you. But, you know, you put something like that in a frame, that looks pretty darn good. And if you want to preserve it, you could stop and dry this. It'll dry real fast. It's already drying up over here. But you could dry that and uh, then put it, uh, you know, put a coat of glazing medium or sealer over the top of it to... Uh, to seal it off and then paint up on top of it to protect it if you want. But see, those work really well, especially when you work just pure acrylic like this and you treat it just like a like a watercolor. And look at all of the beautiful colors and stuff that you get over here. All right, so let's go in. I want to do some, I think these are, this would be really pretty. I think a, like a pink rose, a lighter pink rose would be pretty with it. So I'm going to make a medium tone. Let's warm it a bit with the burnt sienna. We'll key off of burnt sienna today because burnt sienna is into the background. So I'm going to make a lighter mid-value pink here. I'm going to shoot for like a six or a seven. That's seven. That's an eight. That'll be, that'll be okay to start. And I, I use a mid-value so it's easy for me to go up and down with it. I'm going to use, a, this is a old brush. <laughs> this is a this is a size 8 old brush. I like to, when I do this casual stuff, I like to use old brushes. So many of my students go out and buy new brushes and everything. Oh, we're going to take with David. We've got to get all new brushes. And the first thing I say is take out your oldest brush you have. <laughs> you know, it's just a lot of fun. I just, I just love this industry. So I'm just going to paint that. Yeah, that comes out really nice. And what I'm going to do is with the rose is like we do is we keep it kind of the, the circle. Let's stay, stay out of that light area right there. I like that. And I like that dropping down there too. We'll kind of, kind of, 
you know, maybe that's a, a good size, but let's trail, let's trail down. Maybe one over here falling down. I love to trail down roses and stuff. And uh, let's, um, let's put another one maybe right out over here. We'll leave some space. We'll do maybe a turned back one, something like that. We could have a like a rosebud right out here by this interest, that might be kind of nice. So sometimes my background interest that I put into the painting starts to determine my drawing or what I'm going to do with the painting. Now, the next thing I'll do, so that's going to dry pretty quick. So I'm going to take some more red and I'm going to cool it here with some red with some quinacridone here. This will make the darker, a darker uh, center and I'll start my center of my rose and I just spin the brush around a little bit then I just lift the pressure off here and let the softness of this fusion brush do the softening see it makes it look like it's blended there it does the softening for me then I'm going to drop down come right back down into this area here and I'm going to put a nice dose of that red right in there for the bowl of the rose that's going to be the, the bowl now let's just change the color a touch here, maybe a little bit more violet or so. And uh, let's push this one up this side and then down for the bowl of the rose. So what it does is, and you can push like this too, I'll use my fingers to push off here, but I'm not blending. And that's the one thing is that I, I use, I'm a tone painter. I do very little blending in anything that I do. I'm a tone painter. That's why I can paint pure acrylic or I can paint, uh, you know, with extenders and stuff like that. But my, my, my first love is painting acrylic. I like it to dry. So we'll push that one out. That might be a little strange, but you know what? You can have a strange flower in your composition. It's okay. Let's put a bit of that red right over here for to make that more of a rosebud. Now, see this right in here. See, it's, a, it immediate, it, it's a little wet right there. It's dry right there. This is dry right there. The, uh, and I want it to dry. Right now, it is minus 6 degrees outside the studio here. So the heat's been on all day. And I haven't, and you know, when my wife is here, she likes it like really warm and it's really dry. So it dries pretty fast. But this is what I'll show you this, even though this is dry right into there. Okay. And, uh, cause it dries real fast right now cause the air is so warm and dry. Um, I can take some water here and this is what we call the solvent technique. I can just take water on my brush and I can come through. See, I can blend that off. See, I can soften that off just with the blend. If I wanted to soften that edge, I just take a little water like that and I can soften the edge. The Heritage Acrylics are designed to do that for about 90 minutes to two hours, depending upon, um, you know, how much heat and stuff is in your area. That's why I don't worry about softening out. I can just take some of that water into my brush and come back through here and just run right through it, even after it's dry, and soften it off there. In a couple hours, I won't be able to do that, okay? So that's a solvent technique where I put on the color and then I can come back and soften. So I can soften this little edge right here, just put a little water in my brush, soften it off, and or I can do what I like to do is half-tone painting. That's my favorite, is half-tone painting. Uh, but solvent technique is great. Uh, I'm gonna take a little darker color and I'm gonna push a bit more dark, just lift off here maybe a bit, maybe just a touch more dark right into the center. I want this to be the queen. I always believe in making one rose that stands out above all, and I call her the queen. She is the, she's the leader of the composition. And when I paint casual, you'll see me do little marks like this and cover them up later. But this little casual bit that I do here is just to keep my brush moving. You know, when you're a beginner, it's, it's hard. You don't know exactly where to go and, and, and do all of that. But when you get more advanced, after you get about, you know, four or 5,000 roses under your belt, it doesn't take that many, but then your brush will loosen up. And sometimes, and you've got to just let that go and just start. Inside here, guys, is the world's best artist. Right here is not. If you do too much thinking, 
the natural flow of your brush and paint and design can't come out. Does that make sense? So sometimes, but when you're learning, you have to think, and then that causes your flowers to be more stiff. So don't worry about it. It will come. Let's lighten this up. So see, this is dry over here, see? This is just dry, but I can reactivate that with some water. See this? I can do that. And that's when I paint pure acrylic, I like to do that. I'll just reactivate that with some water. Here it is all usable again. Or you can add some extender medium to it and keep it going. But I'm a tone painter, so I like to change my tones and stuff all the time. So I'll const I'm a mixer. I love to mix. That's what gives life and, and stuff to the flowers that I paint. So I'm going to want to get some lighter color up here. I'm gonna, I constantly use a paper towel and I touch it off. I use that paper towel to control moisture and clean my brush and stuff. So let's get a little lighter color. Let's strike right across the front and build the front of that rose up a bit. Okay. And again, I can soften that out or I can take some water. Let me just show you. And a good thing to do too, if you're a, you know, a newer painter or so, is do what we call the two brush technique take some water in a brush, have another brush that is just water into it that you can just pull through if you want to blend that, see? And you'll just pull through a couple times and blend it. Uh, that's that's kind of a, a, a nice thing to have. You can So you could do a two brush technique. I like to use the one, but I can tell you if I was a beginner, I'd be using a two brush pretty easy. Uh, let's put that out. Let's uh, draw bigger like a petal here will make this rose kind of fall down right in here. And so what I talk about as a half tone is here's my light tone, here's my intermediate, my inside. I'm going to make a tone right in between the two here that's just a little darker and that becomes the softer what we call the half tone, the tone right in between both those roses there. And maybe a little of that color out over here to this side. Okay, I can uh, Let's take that a little more quinacridone and drop that shadow in there. I like that cooler. I like I love that kind of stuff that happens with acrylics. Those quick strikes and just what I call marks and movements of color. I like that kind of stuff. Um, let's uh, just wipe some of that excess out of the brush. Let's go just a touch lighter maybe here. So you can see my rose right here. I'm a little bit lighter and uh, maybe add a, a lighter, smaller movement in there. We'll take some of this nice light. Maybe we'll go uh, more yellow. Let's get, let's go over here to the warm side of the rose and, add, and switch it over to more yellow. That makes it fun as well. So we'll drop in, pulling into that bowl, some uh, petals there. I got a little pink streak in there and that's okay. If you want to take it out, just Take, put another stroke in there. Let's go a bit of that light edge. We'll turn this into the light part of the rose. I'm pulling down into the bowl towards the stem line here. Right in like that. Let's pink the back. So I'll just pick up a little pink and pink the back of that rose right there so it stays a bit uh, softer. So that we want the yellows to come forward here. Now sometimes I will just come up here like a nice doggy light yellow and I'll just grab that and push that right into the rose. And you can see, you know, some of this will, will stay wet. You can push that, soften it, and push some of that yellow right into the rose. That's, you know, that works really well. And if it doesn't, if it's too dry on you, you can add some water to it. I usually keep a, and I don't have it out here right now, I used to keep a little mister bottle and I'll miss that sometimes uh, if I want to uh, move color a lot. So you can miss that over the whole surface and then keep it a little bit wetter, a little longer. But I could rinse that out use or use the two brush technique and soften that. See, I'll wipe my brush, I picked up some yellow. Soften the edges of that just like that. So that looks like it's blended with extenders and all that kind of stuff. It's not. I'm using a fusion brush which is designed to do this and I'm using just water. Let's go up, let's lighten that up a bit here. Let's streak a little lighter, a little warmer, a little more yellow. Let's get some more yellow into that. Some Darulide, you could use Hansa, you could use any of those. 
and let's just pull down some light right there, okay? And sometimes I'll lose that bull shadow, so I'll just pick up, I'll just wipe that color out of my brush. I'll pick up a bit of the reds that I wanted to keep into the bowl, and I'll just pull right back through that bowl there, like that, and leaving that. And I'll play back and forth, not play, I'll stroke back and forth with some of those colors until I start to build a one that I a, a look that I like. Sometimes I'll pick up the edge like this, tiny bit of the light color, and I'll come back in there and draw that light, right warm color there, right along the front of that bowl of that rose there. You know, there's all kinds of ways. Uh, this rose, I think I'll let it start to get more light. So I'll pick up more light. Let's put in a another one. Now, what is happening here is I'm starting to build up a lot of paint, and that's going to slow down the drying time of the paint, because I physically have a lot of paint there onto the surface. And I don't always like that, because what happens is every time I make a stroke, it starts to take out some of the stuff I've done before. So I'm going to uh, add some petals over here, work in some areas that are already dry. I like to work on dry areas. So many people run in and they feel that they have to, to paint, they have to keep it always wet. No, I like to paint on a dry surface and put the, put the uh, stroke in the row, I mean, the, the petal and everything in exactly the way I want it. So I'll drop that one in, and the dry surface sticks, and then I adjust it with the tones. Let's drop a little more contrast in with that, um, with that stroke. We'll go back here to a softer pink. Take a little half tone right there, soften through some of that, but I do like that contrast of that dark right in there, so I'll restate that, stroke it in again. And I, you know, generally I'll go back and forth and stuff. Now, I can soften that just by going up to some of my pinks here. Not too light, but a little bit of the pinks and just pull through that. Let's wipe the brush, pick up a little more, maybe a touch lighter pink, and just pull through that. And you can see that softens it, but I took out a touch too much of the bowl there, so I'll put a little bit back in until I start to get a look that I, I like. I can play that. I can work on it and play with that back and forth until I decide what it is that I want to do. And I'm going to put a larger petal right up here into the front of the rose. Okay, maybe just a touch of that pink there. So that'll be the rose. The rose is not done at all, but it just, it's got some shape to it, got a bit of color. Let's move on to some of our other flowers out here. Let's change this up a bit, maybe cool it off a little more quinacridone. And let's just quickly put in some colors over here. And so this rose here will be uh, just a real quick impression of the flower. We'll go a, a touch lighter here. So light's gonna, I'm gonna bring light in from the top. And what I'm doing with that center one there is this is normally what I do a lot of is I'm moving away from it so it dries up a bit so I can come back in there and work it again. So I'll, I'll give a, a bit of shape here to this. I can restate what really makes the rose in everything you do is the shadows. So I can just drop in some more cool shadows there. Doesn't that make a nice pretty little, with some of those rough edges and stuff that just makes a nice little rose there and you know you, sometimes it happens real quick and you can't believe it and you think oh I got to keep painting because that happened too quick no you don't just let it go let's put uh, a little rosebud right there maybe a bit of dark right here into the center rosebuds are are uh, more oval shape so let's just put a bit of dark keep it more oval We'll put a bit of the light right out here, pull down right there. Maybe uh, maybe it's beginning to open up a touch, so let's just give an idea of some opening up right there. So it happens sometimes, you know, when you're painting like this, it can happen pretty quickly. 
you know, your flowers and stuff can happen pretty quickly. I'm going to get rid of some of that extra color there. While I wait for that rose to kind of dry up, I'm going to take some of my favorite color I like to use in for stems and stuff, which is burnt sienna and uh, pine green. And we'll add some other just kind of stems around through the painting. I always I always think that the stems help you with direction and stuff like that that you're going to do on the painting, okay? And I really want to lighten this rose up quite a bit. I, I just think it looks a little heavy except in color, and so I'm going to want to really lighten that up. But I'll use some of these colors. We'll add some water to this, and we'll... Uh, uh, a little more burnt sienna, some water. I'm just going to put in a, a I, I like that area, I'm going to avoid that. I'm going to put a leaf right up over here. Let me show you. So the leaf's going to go in a little dark. And uh, we'll push this one in here too. And let, what I do is I let it set there for just a second to soak into the matte surface. And then I pull the color off, which leaves just a little bit of the memory of that leaf right there and what that does is it gives you a high and low and all automatically immediately lets you uh, see the leaf a little better now you can come back and you know gives it it's light and dark you can come back and add some additional shadows and stuff like that but i love to paint like that <laughs> to me that's just wonderful sometimes i'll put in dark little stems sometimes light stems but i'll use the the water, let's change up that. Let's add some uh, Darulide, maybe a bit of the uh, the uh, Burnt Sienna, which is into our background. And uh, let's add a bit of that. Let that soak in a minute and then pull off some of the color. Leave just a little bit of it there into the shadows. Let's uh, draw down. Create some other movement here. I, this is what this is what I call the brush dance. I'm just kind of filling up the composition there with some color and and uh, kind of working around some of my uh, colors that I have here into the background a bit. And so the question comes, do you make it a perfect leaf? Do you add light colors to it? I don't know yet, but right now we're just letting that dry up a bit and we'll add just the impression of a few here. Maybe just the impression of something right here. Maybe that's just septals coming off the back of that rose there, which is kind of fun. But uh, this one that's right up here, I want to give it some more power. So now it's Yep, it's starting to dry up. Now we can come back. Let's go back in. And so I'm going to paint on it while it is dry, while it's drying here. Let's take, let's get some yellow oxide in here too. And some Hansa, some more powerful lights. We'll go even lighter yet here. We'll lighten up the front of this rose even more here. And again, okay, so there you have that color there. That's getting more what I like here. I can come in here and I can rinse my brush and then watch what will happen. I'll take all that color out and I'll use just water and I can use the solvent technique and pull down and see I blend right between the two. So out back back comes up the pink that softens right into the, uh, the yellow there. Boom! And you softened it out. Or you can paint a half tone. So you can blend out there. So sometimes I don't like that because it starts to really soften the rose. And I don't want the rose to be that soft. I want the color to, uh, the strokes to stand out more. So I won't use the solvent, solvent type of technique. I'll use a half tone. So I'll come in here. This will be a half tone, more of an orange. And we'll push that right in there with the stroke. And see that also softens off that rose, okay? And I could use this yellow right over there as another stroke back up on top of it. That softens it out. And by putting building color that way, you see it's building the rose more. And the roses, if you take a look at that camera there, the rose is coming off more, see? And uh, so there's all different kinds of ways here. You don't have to paint. To paint pretty roses, they don't have to be wet into wet. But it gets frustrating if you want to soften something and 
you know, how do I soften? How do you soften that? Well, you've got lots of time to use the solvent technique of taking water right into your brush here, like this, just a little bit of water, and just pull through like this. That'll soften it. If I want this, you know, this edge of this shadow to be a little softer, I'll just touch it a few times reactivate that shadow a bit and that softens it right out okay you could also add a half tone in there or any kind of tone let's put a little more pink right in there see i could just drop that pink right in there i like that that's kind of pretty you know and then i'm going to go a little more light i'm going to step back down over here where i'm just almost pure white here and I'm going to put a real light petal right up there into the front here. Build, hit that a couple times. Maybe a bit more paint. If it gets weak on me, I'll let it dry so I can get it to stand out here. Sometimes, again, you get too much paint and you have to let it dry up a bit. Let's uh, take a lighter, maybe kind of a pinky color. Just drop like a little petal right back there. Add an extra, maybe a little light edge. This will all come to you as you practice roses. You could take any. I have that whole playlist of the 30 Days of Roses where every day I painted a different rose for you. You could go to that 30-day uh, playlist and practice the acrylic water technique on every single one of those roses. Okay, just use them for shapes and ideas and just practice this technique. Let's pick up a, let's bring up a little more light right up there into the front here. That pedal's kind of off a bit, so I'll just change that around. Let's pinkify that. That's a painting word, pinkify it. Let's pink, add a little red, pink that up a bit. And just add some touches now right in here you know I have a light right to dark how do you how do you do that how do you get rid of that well you have the solvent technique of water you can push that on sometimes I'll let that just soak like that for a second and then just push and that's what the heritage is designed to do see you just put a little water on it let it reactivate the paint for just a second and push. Don't push too hard or don't add too much water. Water's the solvent, which will, you know, reactivate it a bit. After a, after a good two hours, it won't. It's, it's dried hard. It won't be able to do it anymore. Or you can put in a softer tone right over it, which is generally the way I like to do. I like strokes and tones and all that kind of stuff here, so... We're adding just a bit of warmth to that here. So let's add a bit of warmth. Let's get that right down there like that. That's nice. Let's put a little bit of warmth right there. It's, it's always kind of your choice. Now, that one's working too hard. When it's reaching too far and it looks just a little strange, I always say the pedal's working too hard. Let's just open up that center a bit more with some shadow right there and maybe put a smaller lighter pedal to assist it right in there here it's always whenever i get a rose that has some problems to it or something i always say just add more petals you can even turn it into a peony if you just keep going but it's got to be fun there'll be frustration of course there's frustration but it's it's fun Let's put just a bit of light there. That's kind of pretty. I'm going to restate some of that center right in there. So I'll just take some of this color and restate a little more color right in there. Maybe that dark again. The, the main center of interest rose, I like to work a couple times. You can see out here that the outsides, I don't have to do that. But this center of interest rose, see if I work it a couple times. Now look at how much more interesting that center becomes here now. Maybe a touch of some of this dark right out here on this side. And that'll make a pretty little, it's, it's all how much contrast you want. But so I got lots of cool color there. I can take a, not a real bright one, but maybe some of my red and my dark light here, make a more medium value pink and just come through and soften just a bit. And that'll, Make a nice warm cool right in there, see? 
gives a different look to the rows here. But you could you could build more. Like I could take this. Let's lighten this up. Let's put just a bit more here onto the. It. See if I come through a second time, and give a, a touch more color. Everything comes to life more. And that's up to you, how much you do. It's your rose, your painting here. But I'm pulling everything down towards that calyx. That's what I'm doing. That's what I kind of sink everything together here towards that calyx. Here, I'm going to pull the petal out here a little further. And again, how do you soften that? Well, I can wait for it to completely dry. I can take a, a damp brush just like this, just run it right by its edge and soften that out like that. If I want it even softer, just rinse that out again, take your damp brush, just run it right along the edge a couple times and that blends it right in there like that. So you don't need, if you're using a good high quality artist acrylic that's designed to, to dry, you have two different modes. You have what's called the dry and the cure. The dry is when it's surface dry. The cure is when it's really hard and you can't move it anymore. And the Heritage does not cure for hours. It usually takes about 28 hours. But I always say you've got at least two hours. You've got at least two hours in a painting to play and manipulate and move stuff. And if you add extenders and stuff, you have a little more time than that to, uh, you know, work your colors. Let's uh, come down here. So you can see it's just, uh, it, it's good fun. Let's put some pinky colors in here. Let's put, let's get a little crazy here with you. Let's put a, some pinks in. Boom. That's kind of good. Let's get a touch of that warmer yellow, almost orangey kind of color here. We'll drop that in. Maybe right here into the front. We'll just put some of that in. Let's build some light across the front of it here. Now let's soften some of that out. Two ways, I, I love the strokes of it though, but uh, you can pinch wipe your brush, take out a little of that extra color. Just take a soft brush with some water and just run through a bit, just in a few areas here. Blur it out, soften it out. I'm not gonna take too much of that off. I like a lot of that, but you can do that. You can put a half tone in there See, there's all kinds of ways. I'm going to put another lighter little petal right here because I want to. Right in there. Let's just blur that off. Let's uh, restate that pinky shadow right in there. A bit of that. Right in there. I like that looseness of it. Let's put a touch of some pinks right back here. And again, you can soften that in or you can pick up a little dark and just swirl that around a bit. It makes a nice little stroke rose there. I like some of this warmer color. This one up here could have a touch of that warmer yellow right up here. Makes it go with the bouquet a bit better. Okay, maybe an edge. So if I want to draw a petal, I put a light color out onto the edge, right out onto that edge of that brush, and that draws the petal there. I like that. Let's soften that in. Let's just take that color out for a minute, damp brush, and just pull down, soften that in. Maybe a touch of the bowl shadow right in there again, just like that. And again, you can soften down. You can put in a little half tone soften all kinds of ways fun ways if you use the water like this it's you know you you don't you don't have to to paint wet into wet you can with you you can let it dry and have some fun with it this way as well so all kinds of fun fun ways let's put a couple of little touches of light right out through here Bring that queen rose back up even a touch more. Maybe the light's hitting there. I like little things like that. 
just to make little sparks and stuff like that. You know, this is uh, up to you. This is where, you know, how you want to do your roses. Let's drop that out there like that. Question becomes, do you want to put any lighter green and stuff? Sometimes I like to take some of my greens and put the reds in it that tones it down, softens them down. Makes a very great harmonious color that uh, sits very nice in the painting. And we can use that in some of the, uh, you know, leaves and stuff to give it a bit more interest. So let's bring out, like maybe right here, we'll bring out that leaf, pull that down a bit. We'll go a little lighter, a little more yellow here. Yellow green, maybe just a bit here. Just some sparks of color. Let's go a little more green. Maybe a, a just, I love burnt sienna and green. I this is just something about that color. I just, my painting seems more complete when I have a whole bunch of that in there. <laughs> Everybody's going to have your own favorites. Maybe we'll do a light little vein line here coming out of that one. And <clears throat> let's put a stroke of green right in there. And again, I could soften any of that, do whatever, you know, I need to do there just by um, taking some water and stuff. But I like that little stroke that's right there. But I could take some water and... and, uh, and you know, soften it out, or I can put another little half tone. Let's thin out this green. We'll push uh, right into here a couple of leaves, kind of an oval shape like that. Change their tone, maybe a little more yellow and a little bit of burnt sienna. Younger uh, rose leaves that get down in here and the stems are usually more orange. But let's just drop some of that in there like that, and then wipe down to remove and leave just some of the memory. That's why I leave that, I let that, the board itself stay very absorptive. So a lot of people ask me so many times, can you paint on paper? Can you paint on canvas? Well, it can't do that, okay? So I like to paint on these boards. They're inexpensive, they're, they're great uh, to practice on, and they can help you get a lot of different looks. I'll let that set for just a second. And let's pull out down this way here and take that tip of that light right off of that right there. And maybe a dark would look great here for, we'll just pull a shadow, a line there, stem line right there like that. All kinds of ways. It's fun. It's fun, you know, here I'm at the end of the day and I've been painting and creating lessons for my online classes and stuff. And I like to just stay at the end of the day and paint something just light and fun like this. This is acrylic. You know, you don't have to worry about anything staying wet. You don't, and it's just real fun. Use up some paints on your palette. Have a bit of fun with it, you know. Um, and you can paint yourself a, a pretty painting, you know, that, that can... Uh, very frameable painting. It's very different, you know. Let's put a, I like that burnt sienna. Let's take a idea of that burnt sienna. And see, this is where I love to play. I'm gonna take an idea of that burnt sienna through a commonality of the roses and the colors and tie that. So you pick up that burnt sienna down and through and that's, that's kind of pretty. Maybe a uh, mark or two. Let's see if that works down through just a bit of it here into the background. A touch more might be kind of fun here. And this is the fun part. And see, it's just a board. It's a little end cut board that I found out there in the garage. And and uh, I just, you know, we turned this little end cut board into a painting here. Take a little soft water, a little softer, slightly different color, yellow, green. Take off that edge, keep it soft. A little bit, there you go. 
It's a nice little, nice little painting. Sometimes contemporary looks, I take half of this and wash it in a different color. But that one will be really pretty, especially you put it in a little linen frame, and that will come out, you know, pretty nice. Um, you could build more, you know, more interest and stuff on the rose. Let me, do I want to do that? See, I like this. Now, see, you wouldn't believe you can get that just painting pure acrylic. And that's just building it up. And what happens is, you let those, see what happens, and this is what, and I'll be very honest with you, I've been painting, I started painting in high school, and um, back in the, in the mid-70s, 1970s, okay, and I've been, so I've been painting a long time, and for my first 25 years of painting, I always thought everything had to stay wet, really, to paint. Painting was working wet color into wet color. My whole, my whole attitude changed. Uh, especially with the new modern acrylic, what we call 2K acrylics. And as a chemist, which is what I am, is after you, after 2000, there was a huge jump in the knowledge of acrylics and binders. And so we started making acrylic paints different. That's why new, new generation acrylics are different. And I say to you all the time, no acrylics are the same because some of them I've made back in the 80s and 90s and some of these today, 2K acrylics, are different. And so, and they can do different things. But now I just think, okay, so now we have the very, the drying times on the paint. We could, uh, you know, it can dry and we can still work the edge. Uh, you can uh, come back in and work half tones. But see, even right here, okay, this is dry. This is the one I was painting the pink rose here. So it's dry. I'll take some water here. Let's try to clean my finger. I've got a little leaf color on there. And I'll just push like this. And here comes the color again. See, the color is back. There's the color coming back. And it's, you slowly, you know, depending on how long it's been drying, you, you have some, you have some time here to work with it. So there, it is there. You can even take it all the way back up. That's why I tell some of my students when you're, if you're painting, don't always take everything out. If you're ready to go try something else, take a damp paper towel here and just take it onto your palette and go like this and wipe, don't throw your palette away, just start wiping it down, reconstituting the paints, wiping them off here, scratch it a little bit there like this and you know in just a few seconds you can uh, scrub up your, uh, your palette and now I've cleaned off my palette area here and I'm ready to uh, you know start another, uh, start another painting. Or sometimes what I do is just like I do with the, the background on that one, even over here where this is dry. Let's try this. See, it's not quite as easy, but it'll still come up. It'll do that for a couple of hours. So it's been 40 minutes, okay? But you can take that all up, and now you can go start another one right down in there and paint it with. So painting with the acrylic, or whether you paint with extenders, or open medium, I show you on the channel here, open medium. My job is, see this is what it is guys on the channel, and I hope all of you click like and I hope all of you subscribe. And through this journey of art, I'm gonna talk a lot because I wanna teach you. I wanna teach you how to do some of this stuff. And I have 40 years of teaching and experience to share with you. Painting it as acrylic, painting with it a la prima more as like an oil and slowing it down and the techniques we use on that okay painting gouache painting watercolor i do all of them with these same acrylics i show all different kinds of ways to do it with these same acrylics okay you have a lot of versatility but today's modern acrylics you can slow them down or you can paint with them as a pure acrylic and still make it look exactly I mean look at that it, that looks like it's been wet blended with an oil and I didn't I didn't have anything out of here but the pure acrylic paint and the water okay but it takes some practice it takes some frustration good frustration is a good way to you learn from that okay we learn by doing things wrong not by doing things correct we'll talk more about that okay so I hope you subscribe to the channel. I hope you follow along. We're going to be starting up all of our beginning lessons and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to take you, you know, you can watch advanced lessons like what's painting there and, uh, you know, in the back and portraits and all kinds of fun stuff. But 
And if you have questions, you write to me. And when I have time, I'll film something to, uh, to address that. I have a quest for landscapes with buildings. I have that coming next week. I have a little church down in Louisiana. We're going to paint it. And uh, so fun things like this. But this is solvent painting. Painting with a pure acrylic. And it's a lot of fun. Especially at the end of the day when you're using stuff up. Practice it. And that's the key to everything, guys, is practice, okay? All right. So enjoy it and stuff. Those of you that are in our memberships, I'll put a photo of this one up into the membership so you have it to kind of practice on. But just try some of those techniques. And if you have a problem, write the question right down there in the comments. And if I have time, I'll get to it and I'll answer that for you, okay? All right. Because I love to teach and I want you to learn how to do some of this stuff because painting is a blast it's so much fun okay it is so much fun and uh, brings so much joy so all right all right i'll see you on the next one